Hello guys and welcome to today's tropical update and yes we are doing a morning video today I thought you know why not there's nothing much really going on to really wait for you know might as well get uh, do it early then here we are anyways we are now looking at still at an area of interest here in the main development region here still at a 0 20 shot it's, it's still poorly organized which we'll look at here in just a moment this is a tropical wave that is located near the west coast of Africa that is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions are expected to be marginally conducive for gradual development of this system while it moves westward to west northwest at 15 to 20 miles per hour across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic during the early and middle part of next week. This wave still has a 0 20% 20 per, uh, 20 chance over the next 2 to 5 days. And we're going to take a look at that right now, as it's still sorely, sorely disorganized here. I mean, there are some showers starting to pop up here, but this is, but it's certainly not enough. And as you can see, this milky white colors here, this is dry, stable air that it's uh, pretty much eating right now. What, what this wave will probably do is probably eat up some of that dry, stable air for our next wave to come through. And the models have been kind of gung-ho on that for the last couple of days you know but you know obviously we still got to see the, the splashdown happen before it before we really take any models with a uh with face value but this right here what you see off the west coast of the islands of cabo verde you know this is the area that we're watching right now all right, so now we're going to take a look at the GFS. This was initialized at 16 this morning. And as you can see, here's our disturbance right here. It's a little bit more east than what the NRC X has. But we're going to take a, a sounding anyways. We're looking at 18 knots of shear and 82% relative humidity. The, the shear is so-so, but the relative humidity is pretty good at this point. 24, uh, 24 hours, CEC, not much is going on. And as you can see, GFS... It's off and on with an area of low pressure, so that's what it's going to be here, at least according to GFS. Let's take a look at the soundings here for this point in time. The shear is good, but the relative humidity is not very good at all. So we just uh, we're going to have to see what happens with this going forward. You know, this is probably going to be the, the sacrificial lamb. To this thing right here, which is another disturbance we're going to probably be watching here over the course of the next couple of days. We're going to take a sound of that really right now too. So with this one, we're looking at 12 knots of shear and 84% relative humidity. So right now, this thing is sitting in some pretty pretty good conditions once it, once it comes out and tries to consolidate. So we're just going to have to see how that all pans out going forward in time. All right, so now we're going to look at the ECMWF. This was initialized as zero Z. I would show the 60 euro, but it only goes about 90 hours, and that's not very very helpful at all. So as you can see, the euro, it, it tries to consolidate something, but it just doesn't get the job done. It just it pretty much goes into some dry, stable air mass. The, the shear is good. Shear is good, but the relative humidity is only at 69%. So it's not very good at all for development. And as you can see, it still has the moisture plume to it. Just that it's not, it's, it's, it's in dry, stable air. So there's not really much it can do. And then this year at this point, we're looking at 24 knots this year, 45% relative humidity. There ain't nothing to that right there. But here is our second system we're going to be watching. So let's take a quick sounding of that too, real quick. We are looking at seven knots of shear and 62% relative humidity. So the relative humidity is still kind of iffy here for the second system as we head out through time. All right, so here is the icon. All right, we're gonna take a look at the zero C and the 12 Z here. All right, so this was initialized at 12 Z here. And as you can see, Icon at the start tries to consolidate something, but it doesn't quite get the job done. And then you can see the second wave that comes off here. 
about a thousand and nine millibars here at this point. But then you see something kind of interesting. We're going out a little bit past five days here. We're more like six six days, six and a half. But you see the icon is trying to consolidate. This is probably wave number one if I had to take a guess. Wave one. This is wave one. So that might be something to watch a little bit later on. Okay, so here's the 6C model. It's pretty much the same with it. And then you can see the second wave coming off. 1006. And then you see the icon is still trying to charge up a little bit of a bit of an area here near the islands at around the five day mark. I'm not I'm not entirely sure if this is the first area of interest or not, but if it is, this might be something to watch a little bit later on down the, the road. All right, before we close things off on this short little update, we're going to take a look at some tweets from Andy Hazelton here. Very, very knowledgeable guy. You know, go ahead and follow him if you guys want to. I'll leave a link down below to his Twitter. And it, this is what he had to say. So you can see that he circles off a few of these circles here. These are these African easterly waves. This one, the second one is looking at extra juicy here. But as you can see, the first, the wave that the models are trying to pick up is almost bone dry here. So what that does here is because it's dry, it's the dry air isn't really going to get to it all that much if it's already dry. So maybe because of how large it is that it might have a better opportunity a little bit farther west than your typical spots in the MDR region. That's something we're going to have to watch a little bit later on. But as you guys know, some of these models are trying to trying to form it here in the short term, about the five day mark. But we're just going to have to see what, it, what, it, what happens during splashdown or what have you. All right, so here's another Andy Hazleton tweet here. And what he says here is, my gut says something is going to form eventually because it's peak season right now. Favorite MGO is warm MDR. But he's not particularly confident we see one of these waves actually start to, until one of these waves actually starts to fight off the dry and stable layer, which I completely agree with. They, the dry and stable air has been relentless this year, and that's why the season has been kind of slow at this point, because, you know, it's just not a prime environment for systems to take off. But I feel once we get into September, that could change a little bit, and tomorrow we're going to go over to longer range models. We're going we're gonna to do that once, once a week, probably on Monday. I try, I try to keep it in the five to seven day time frame, but tomorrow we're going to find We're going to look at probably 10 days. We're going to look 10 days out, but still, once we look at that 10 days, take it with a grain of salt. We're just seeing what kind of patterns we got going on, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again in tomorrow's video.